Welcome into PFS Two Minute Drill, the Friday edition of the Two Minute Drill. I'm with my guys Anthony Tresh and Ben Lindsay. I got to start with you, Anthony. Who is the third best quarterback in college football after Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields? Yeah, I mean the country's going to hate me for this one, but I got to go with Jamie Newman, the transfer into wow. Georgia from Wake Forest. I mean, I mean Wake Forest really didn't use him all that well. I mean they used, relied more on his mobility than his arm, and they really needed to rely on more more on that arm. He's a very athletic guy, but this guy's a very talented and accurate passer. I mean, this past year he faced the highest rate of tight window throws, five percent higher than any other college quarterback. Yet he posted the second highest PFF passing grade behind only the first overall pick, Joe Burrow, on those throws. He's very accurate and he's a great deep passer. Something Jake Fromm really couldn't seal the deal on last year for Georgia. So I think. Jamie Newman, he's the third best quarterback in college football. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people this year. I'm actually going to go with Iowa State's Brock Purdy. Uh, he's someone who came in midway through the 2018 season and looked really good, graded out in the high 80s. Uh, came back last year and his grades took a little bit of a hit, but that's an Iowa State offense that doesn't have a lot of talent around him. And Purdy has still looked good, particularly from a clean pocket when he's in rhythm. Those are the valuable areas you want to see a quarterback look good. That translate to the next level yeah i mean th this is a tough question i mean the reason we're asking because it's a tough question trey lance kj costello jamie newman you have guys like sam ellinger of texas shane Duchel of smu it's a very good quarterback group entering 2020 but i'm going with a different guy here i'm going with my guy sam powell of unc one of the best true freshman grades we've ever seen at the quarterback position i think he and keaton slovis are two quarterbacks that are younger on the younger side not up there with the juniors and seniors but guys who are really really talented i think sam howell the third best grade right behind burrow and fields and from a clean pocket this past year i think sam howell is the third best quarterback but it's close yeah you're scaring me a bit when you're bringing up trey lance and kj Costello. i'm a big fan <laughs> of keaton slovis and sam howell now we're shifting gears to the nfl guys we're going down this road again jamal adams getting some trade rumors and reportedly going to seek the New York Jets are going to seek a first and a third round pick is that too much for Jamal Adams I don't think it is I think a first round plus a little extra and a third round pick makes sense uh that's about what Adams is worth if you look at what Khalil Mack got Adams is the more valuable player than Khalil Mack he's someone who is versatile he can play different positions on the defense move around grades well in run defense as a pass rusher even and in coverage uh grades above 75 in all three of those phases the last two years so I think getting one of the better safeties in the NFL for that price is not crazy. I'm with you, Ben. I think Jamal Adams, obviously the price tag is going to be a first rounder along with some some change there, maybe a third round pick. And I don't think that's too much. And you compare it to a trade like DeForest Buckner, traded for a first round pick and then paid over $20 million per year to make Jamal Adams the highest paid safety in the league would only cost 15 plus million dollars. I think that's worth it. Jamal Adams, the more valuable player on defense. He can play a lot of different things for you. I think he can play in the box. He can play deep. He can play slot cornerback. Those players have so much value in the NFL. He positively affects the coverage unit on the back end. I think you would, the price tag won't be too much on a second contract and the value from the pick standpoint, I think makes sense. Yeah, I mean, no disagreements here. I and mean, you guys have said it. He's versatile. He's a Mr. Versatile in the NFL. He can do anything. He does it at a high level. And going back to these last two years, he's been the seventh most valuable non-quarterback in the NFL in regards to PFF four. I mean, this guy wow. is the real deal. I would send the house. I mean, if I'm a contender picking in the back half of the first round, you can have that first round pick. You can have a second round pick too. You can have the next, the year after that's first. I don't care. Give me Jamal Adams. This guy is a difference maker. Yeah, and Adams is someone who he really took that jump into elite in his second season. Um, so looking at last year's crop of rookies, who is the player that you think has the best chance to break out and sort of take that jump to the next level in 2020? I think it's Jamel Dean, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers cornerback. Looking at the back half of the season, this guy had the most passes defense of any cornerback in the NFL. Super impressive at the catch point, super impressive in man coverage. He's a super athletic cornerback coming out of Auburn a year ago. And I think entering this year, another year in the defense, I think Jamel Dean's going to really cement himself as one of the better young cornerbacks in the NFL. Yeah, I'm going to go with Quinn and Williams, the interior defensive lineman that once played for the Alabama Crimson Tide. I mean, he was one of the surest things we've seen when he was coming out of Alabama. And he broke PFF college records when he was there until Chase Young did it this past year, but he had 92.5 grades above, both as a pass rusher and run defender. 96.0 overall grade his final year at Alabama. I mean, this guy's going to break out. It's all about when he's going to do it. So I think he's probably the most likely one of that crop. I like both Dean and Williams, but my guy is Brian Burns uh, for the Carolina Panthers. Coming out of Florida State, 
he just has rare movement skills off the edge. Uh, and he really got off to a hot start before he got injured his wrist. Uh, and then he had surgery on that wrist and his playing time sort of took a hit. So I think next year to look for him to build on that and get back to the form we saw early in the season. Big fan of Brian Burns. I think he could definitely take a jump in 2020. You want to get rid of me and get back to more great PFF YouTube content? All you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.